Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webcast, Five Steps to an Effective Vulnerability Management Program. I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Coordinator at Tripwire, Tripwire, and I'm excited to be part of this presentation today. So before we start, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, you want to make sure that your audio is streaming correctly. Please note that the audio portion will stream through your PC or laptop speakers. Be sure to check your speaker volume and the volume in your Windows or Mac OS or your headset to ensure that it's turned on and volume is at an audible level. Today's webcast is presented using a slide deck. You can click on the expand rectangle on the top right corner of the slide area to enlarge. If you're not seeing the slide movement on your console, you can try hitting the refresh icon in your browser URL bar or hitting F5 to refresh. And if you're having any sort of technical difficulty, please click on the Help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical issues. All the widgets are located at the bottom of your screen. If you have a question for our presenters, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Lastly, I will be sending out a link to the on-demand version of this webcast and a link to the slides. Also, if you're interested in earning a CPE credit for attending today, that information will be in the email. So let's get on to today's uh, presentation. First, I'd like to introduce our speakers. Uh, we have David Lennon, Director of Professional Services at Lumetta, Josh Canary from Computer Sciences Corporation, and Bryce Schroeder, Senior Director of Systems Engineering at Tripwire. If you're interested in looking at their full bios, you can click on the bio widget to read all about them. So now I'd like to turn it over to David Lennon from Lumetta. Take it away, David. Okay, thanks very much. Um, so just to begin here with a little bit about Lumetta at a glance, if you will, we provide our clients with what we call foundational intelligence. Now this is a complete set of facts about the enterprise. We say foundational because it serves as the base upon which sound decisions can be made and other solutions can be empowered. Intelligence because, well, data is just data. Data needs structure to become information, and it needs analysis to become intelligence. And the decisions you make about a vulnerability management program need to be based on intelligence and not just data. So this set of facts collected through multiple discovery techniques and processed through our advanced analytic engine becomes this actionable intelligence that enables our clients to make informed decisions about what actions to take to ensure the security, compliance, and availability of their networks, devices, and data. So we didn't create the concept of situational awareness. We've adopted the premise and applied it to the enterprise network. It means understanding the state of the state, if you will. What's the reality on the ground, not just the perception? Too often, we see organizations that have made assumptions about their environment based on outdated or inaccurate information. This outdated, inaccurate information, when compared to reality, represents a gap. A gap that, depending on the size, can result in everything from a nuisance to a gaping security hole. So close the gap. Achieve network situational awareness. Our history of providing this network situational awareness to our clients from large commercial brand names to U.S. government agencies tasked with protecting the nation gives them the confidence and trust to make sound decisions based on fact, not fiction, based on reality, not assumption. So let's talk about this gap. In working with our clients for over a decade, we have seen an undisputed gap in network visibility across the enterprise, often as large as 20%. And I'll share in a moment some specific quantified examples of this. Now, the causes for this gap in visibility are many, none of which should really come as a shock when you think about them in the context of your environment. Unmanaged and unsecured devices. Bring your own device programs alone have introduced a whole world of new devices to the enterprise. No longer is it just a desktop and maybe a corporate issue BlackBerry per person. There's phones and tablets from any number of vendors and carriers, all connecting to the network. Add to that 
game consoles, security cameras, even roller coasters, all of which we find in our clients' environments. And you have quite a list. What about devices that speak IPv6? It's been around a long time. Most gear that's been rolled out in the last you know, 8 to 10 years has an IPv6 capability. What used to be a device with a single communication channel can now be dual stacked, speaking both v4 and v6. Is your network ready for that? How is the infrastructure passing that traffic? Are there security controls in place to handle it? If you can't answer these questions, there's this gap you have. The disappearing network edge. Yesterday, as coincidence would have it, I was in a session working with a client. We were hashing out a plan to deploy some systems to meet a set of requirements that they had. So we started with, we'll stand up this system over here in Amazon Web Services. That will be able to reach that network over there. Now let's put this other one over in VMware's vCloud Air environment, and that will be able to hit that network. And then these two guys will be able to talk together through this one, and they'll both reach back to the DMZ. So where is the edge of my network in that example? You add to that mobile devices, such as BYOD, and the problems only increase. Corporate change, it's a fact. Mergers, acquisitions, divestiture, network consolidation, outsourcing, insourcing, managed services, it's hard to keep up. This is the speed of business, and it's not slowing down. They're all happening all the time to varying degrees in the organization. And any of these, all of these, create this gap in visibility one that presents the opportunity to miss a critical piece of the puzzle and leave your systems vulnerable and put the enterprise at risk. So as promised, some of the examples of this gap. Um, real numbers from real clients. We have, of course, changed the names to protect the innocent, as it were. And as you can see, in every one of these cases, there's a clear gap in what the assumption was going in and how that assumption banged up against harsh reality. And it's not just in the device count. Unknown networks, unauthorized devices, BYOD anyone, non-responding networks, all of these contribute to the gap in visibility across our client base, prior to our arrival, of course. In that financial industry example, the first estimate they gave us was actually more like 600,000 active devices. As we approached getting ready to go live, they said, you know what, I think we're more like 800,000. The discovered number of 842,000 plus really should have an asterisk next to it, as in so far, because we're still working with that client. We're still finding more devices. We're pushing 900,000 now. So again, these missed network elements, as we described them, aren't just devices. They're connections, network segments, filtering devices that block paths to the other parts of the environment. These all conspire to create this gap in visibility, and it impacts your ability to make sound decisions. Now, a key point here is that in all of these examples, and, and frankly in all of the, the clients we work with, all of them had an established vulnerability management program. Now, it may sound this way, but it's not a knock on vulnerability management. In fact, that's exactly why we're having this conversation today. VM solutions are a critical piece of the security landscape. I mean, quite frankly, as product suites, they do things that Lumetta does not. However, the ability to have this full visibility across the network enterprise to reach out to all connected devices, especially those that have been traditionally unmanaged and therefore falling outside of a typical vulnerability management program, enables Lumetta to provide to the VM solutions, like Tripwire IP360, for example, a complete set of facts to go forth and do its magic on. It's exactly the reason that the integration we're going to describe today exists, to extend the reach of the VM solution and cover the whole enterprise and eliminate this gap. So what does this gap really mean? Network change and complexity, aka the speed of business, moves much faster than policy and procedure do. In fact, quite often, the policy decisions and the resulting procedures to enforce those policies are reactive, chasing business, playing catch up as it moves ever faster. Again, this presents this gap that leaves the enterprise at risk. There was a quote on an earlier slide, don't know if you caught it, but it was a great comment from Mark Orndorff at DISA, the Defense Information Systems Agency. You can't defend what you don't know. 
And that's it exactly. If you don't know it, you can't see it, you can't map it, you can't manage it, you can't secure it. So how much risk does this visit visibility gap introduce into the enterprise? Who knows? Until you know how big the gap is, what it represents, where it impacts your enterprise, and what systems are affected, frankly, you can't know. The key is to identify that gap so you can measure and quantify the risk associated with it in order to prioritize remediation. Otherwise, you're going to simply find yourself lurching from one fire drill to the next. We all have better things to do with our day than that. So network situational awareness is what gives you that finger on the pulse of the environment, that state of the state. It lets you identify the gap resulting from assumptions based on that inaccurate, outdated information. It gives you a full set of facts about the connected enterprise. So you can know not just what's on your network, but what is your network. The routes, the subnets, the devices, the edge, all of it. This lets you address the risk and close the gap. This is the very foundation of a comprehensive vulnerability management program. So five steps to an effective vulnerability management program. Validate the network address space. Identify the breadth of the network so you can answer that question, what is the network? Without that, you can't know what's on the network. This critical first step lays the groundwork for all the steps that follow. If the effort is not made to understand the full scope of the IP-connected environment, any activity that follows on will fall short and perpetuate this visibility gap I've been describing that you need to overcome. Two, determine that network edge. Where does your network stop and the next one begin? Where's your customer extranet as compared to the DMZ? Where are your partner connections? Determining the edge of the network not only provides this sort of stopping point of the enterprise, but it identifies the networks and devices that serve as the first line of defense, or thought differently, the first target in the network enterprise. These edge devices and networks should be considered among the first places to begin assessment and remediation activities. Three, discover and profile the endpoints. Enumerate and identify the devices, all the devices in the enterprise. So you have a current status of how many and of what things there are. Second only to validating that network breadth in the first step, completing a full count of the devices in the enterprise is essential. It is the target space for an assessment of device vulnerabilities. Number four, identify the vulnerabilities. Now this applies to not only the endpoints, but the network itself. We all understand the need to identify the vulnerabilities of the endpoints. They're the systems in use, day in, day out, handling data, processing transactions, and so on. But no less important is an understanding of the vulnerabilities from a network perspective. Data at rest, data in use must be protected, but equally important is data in motion, and motion is carried by the network. Is there bleed over between network segments? Could an intruder that it was able to access the DMZ find a device that's got a connection to a back-end system through a firewall? Are classified networks that are supposed to be air-gapped truly separate from the non-classified networks? Failure to identify the network-level vulnerabilities, again, puts the enterprise at risk. Finally, mitigate the risk. Prioritize remediation. Fix the first things first and work your way down the list. Start with the networks and devices deemed to be mission critical. They may be those edge devices. They may be the most you know, critical information that you process in general. But start there and work your way down. As important as identification of vulnerabilities is, fixing the problems is the real purpose of this effort. So doing it in the right order reduces your risk profile by resolving the issues that, if compromised, do the most damage. We've all heard the saying, we need to be right every time. The bad guys just need to be right once. So close the visibility gap and give yourself the best chance to be right every time. 
And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Bryce from Tripwire. Bryce? Great. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. Um, so you can see from what David's just gone through, we have a really comprehensive solution in terms of the way Lumetta and Tripwire function together. And after I get through my initial segment, um, we've, we've got Josh who will be coming on and actually showing an implementation uh, and the effectiveness of how it works. Um, so I want to give just a quick profile of, of Tripwire for those who, who are not aware of, of who we are and, and what we've got. We are a 150 million plus uh, company privately held. Um, we are currently uh, now uh, number two uh, in the uh, security configuration management uh, platform space. Over 400 employees uh, and uh, about 9,000 customers across the globe in terms of what happens. And we're now delivering enterprise uh, scale around advanced threat protection, security, and compliance solutions. Um, Moving on from there, kind of walking through our, our product mix, we're here today to talk about the integration between IP360 uh, and Lumetta, but we have a number of other elements uh, as well around security configuration management, file integrity, and policy management, as well as log intelligence pieces. And across all of those elements in terms of providing threat protection data, uh, and, and keen intelligence on that is the ability to provide accurate, reliable data in a business context that you provide around the asset and criticality of whatever that device or asset is, and then really trying to drive um, automation, not for automation's sake, but because we know that time uh, to detect, time to remediate, and more importantly, um, time to protect things is scarce. Um, your time is precious. So we want to make sure that inside of that accurate data with business context, that your time uh, to de to, uh, is, is valued in terms of what's there. And we do that by integrating solutions like the one we're showing you today with, with Lumetta. So let's walk down and into the solution space and get a better understanding of what it is we're talking about today. So this is a, a contextual diagram of, of the actual integration. Uh, and David's done a great uh, job of setting up how that problem space works. But really, when it gets down into how the, the function works, it's really a, a multi-step process. So IP360 has the ability to do a profile and scan of all the devices on your network. But it's periodic. Um, IP Sonar from Lumetta actually has the ability to passively aggregate all things that are happening on your network. It's, it's listening constantly and continually to determine what's out and what's actually talking, even if it's a transient, something that turns on and off. Lumetta has the ability to discover and actually detect what that particular asset or device is. And so this integration is key and critical in that IP Sonar and Lumetta will discover all of the components that are in that network space and adds that into the rich contextual framework of what happens inside of IP360. We deliver it accurately through an API. And then IP360, IP360 takes over from there in terms of taking those discovered devices and assets anywhere and everywhere in the network and performing a comprehensive host profile um, on that particular device. And not just um, devices in terms of hosts or endpoints, but also network devices, printers, mobile devices, web infrastructure, and a deep profile uh, in, in addition, um, applications, databases, web infrastructure, and any virtual machines that may sit on any of those things to really get a, a true fingerprint or profile of what that device is, what its function is, and the meta information um, about how that uh, device performs inside of your network. So again, key ele element is keen discovery capability and Lumetta's functionality, as well as deep profiling with um, high accuracy from the Tripwire IP360 piece and really brings forward a, a implementation of, of high integrity with uh, deep value in terms of delivering that to you. 
So let's go in a little bit further and deeper into how that works. So I mo mentioned um, the difference uh, between profile and scan. Classical vulnerability management pro uh, products actually scan and, and will look at uh, each of the devices. But we do a, a very deep um, inspection of what's actually on the device, how it looks, um, not just uh, the, the CVEs or vulnerabilities and exploits of the device, but actually the contents of what's actually running on the system. We call that a stack fingerprint. So we're looking all the way from the operating system and virtual infrastructure all the way through the application layers uh, and web infrastructure that may be layered on that device. The same is true if that's a network device or, say, a uh, network-attached storage uh, unit. We can actually profile all of the, the pieces that are on that and then look not just a one-time scan, but over time at the changes of what is actually layered on that device, not just in vulnerability sense, but actually in an application and layered pieces. We actually check for 100,000 different conditions uh, in terms of our actual scan elements, and we do that very intelligently. Rather than throwing everything in the kitchen sink in a, in a high uh, level of, of uh, inspection, we actually recognize the device and use only those um, elements appropriate to that network or operating system-based um, device to profile to make sure um, that we are deep in terms of our inspection and data extraction, but very sensitive such that we're not actually creating any uh, concern about the device itself. And then the other piece which is critically important and a differentiator, especially in this integration, is we mentioned that Lumetta's key capability is around you know, passive discovery, being able to really sense everything that's happening, even if it's been turned on and off in the network or it's being hid uh, behind a, a portion of a, a subnet. Um, Tripwire has the ability to follow and track those things. We have a, a function and capability called dynamic host tracking. So if a device has moved from one IP address to another, we can actually sense and, and fingerprint that it is exactly the same device, but it's now moved to a new location, uh, giving you the ability to know if uh, a mobile device or potentially even one that should be static but has now become mobile has now moved into a place where it shouldn't be on your network environment. Uh, potentially adding new uh, vulnerability or, or even uh, remote access in a place where it shouldn't. Um, other key differentiators are data resides on premise. It's your data. It doesn't get sent uh, to any other location where it may be compromised. So uh, key differentiation in terms of what's in place. Moving forward uh, from here, we have a number of other key elements. Um, I mentioned that we track and trace those profile pieces about your network. We call that focus. Uh, in a nutshell, it's a database that looks at uh, profile state on each asset, as well as vulnerability and exploit changes per asset in a database format. Why is this important or interesting? Well, that's, that's a really good question. But it gives you the ability without having to go do a new scan to see zero days that may pop up as uh, an example, the one that pops up here where we've got a new browser, which has a vulnerability. Um, and there is no patch available yet. We know that it's a vulnerability piece. But I really want to understand where am I exposed. Literally, walking into focus, I can go and see all of those browsers on the appropriate operating system and find out where in my network I may have vulnerabilities. Are those on critical systems? Or are they on systems and endpoints that are really of less concern to me? Really critical information. Without having to go back through and scan your entire environment again, you want to have the ability to harness the data that you've already looked for. Or in the case of the one we all know uh, is Heartbleed. You know, I want to understand from an from a basis not just of operating systems, but in the case of Heartbleed, a number of routers, um, small and home office units, all of the web application uh, front ends of embedded systems had a Heartbleed component. We were actually able to go data mine that uh, scanned data to find out which applications actually had that component, 
where in the perimeter networks, and again, want to still do a scan in terms of what's going out and profile the rest with a deeper, deeper look, but I can actually have a really good risk sense of where I have threat or potential vulnerability inside my environment by just harnessing the things that I've already tracked and already have uh, profiled in the past. Critically valuable in terms of saving time and really making sure that you're effective in a vulnerability management program. So then the other key piece is we have a, a new vulnerability uh, scoring that's unique um, to Tripwire, and we add this into Lumetta's contextual uh, discovery piece. If you look at traditional scoring, it's usually a one to five model where we've got things that are of informational value and uh, go from low to high. Um, but what really ends up happening with that is everything ends up being extremely important and critical to go fix, which when your security team goes and chats with your operational group, drives the operational group crazy. Um, everything is important all at once. So we've added some additional visibility where we provide granularity in terms of vulnerability. And the way we're doing that is we're making a decision based on ease of the exploit. In other words, is there already a script kitty already developed and out there on the marketplace in the black hat sites like um, Tor and others where, where a hacker of, of note can actually automate the use of it. Um, the second piece is impact of exploit. And, and what we mean by that is does this exploit, if I you know, use it, does it do anything? Does it allow me to exfiltrate data? Does it allow me um, additional privilege? Or even more importantly, is, is it so um, heinous and horrible that I actually have remote uh, privilege on other systems that are critical? Um, those are the way we actually we provide additional uh, granularity around vulnerability scoring. In addition, you know, is that uh, vulnerability been out? Has it been out for a long time? And then we also allow you to provide the uh, business context. So. Um, is this a critical system? We can, you can actually provide additional value into that scoring mechanism to make it uh, more important to you. The way that looks is um, the, the chart here that we have on the right. Um, and while it is hard to read on this webinar, it, it is a heat mapped piece that starts from the lower left where there is no known exploit and there is almost no exposure if this exploit is um, executed to the far upper right where it's hot. Um, and in that quadrant, you have an automated exploit. Again, the scripts are already out. They've been available. They've been uh, morphed and changed and are readily uh, exploitable. And at the same time, on the, on the far right, it gives remote privilege. It's not just direct access, it's remote privilege to other systems and presents a compromise that, that if executed, has a high potential for breach uh, inside of your environment. Again, reason for this is it's critically important that you are able to go fix to, to the, the point that David made earlier, you need to fix the most important things first. That's the highly effective uh, vulnerability management program. So we give you that context to be able to, to move into the upper right and know that the things that you're fixing and the things that are being remediated are absolutely the most important pieces for your environment and what's been discovered uh, in terms of what's there. And then to the left side is really a trend line. So the trend that we're showing in this particular example is by product group or by a division of your corporation. So you can actually see aggregate vulnerability status, again, with your uh, classification of asset or importance of business unit trended over time. So you can actually show uh, to executive levels uh, the trend of their threat and risk uh, on a time basis in terms of things approving and can correlate those things according to uh, events of interest that may have happened, whether there's been assets moved in or assets moved out or remediation uh, step was actually taken place and it actually improved 
uh, kind of the risk and threat landscape, you have now the ability to compare by business group in terms of uh, your environment. So let's look at that in terms of what it means. And that, that really is, it, I mean, to David's earlier point, I mean, you need data. It has to become analyzed to become information, and then with judgment it becomes intelligence. So we provide also the ability to look at the same information in context of the viewing uh, audience that you're intending for. So for executives, we have trending information with insight, the ability to look at what resource impact and planning is in place, and some corporate government portions. And that can look as easy as a, a trend line for a particular group or the chart that we showed on the previous slide. For an audit and compliance group, it's the same data, but displayed in a method and manner in which they are used to from a, from a compliance checkbox or internal audit uh, capability, uh, and we can show those in just pure, simple red-green. And, and then security, you want, you want to know what's risk uh, and exposure I have. Um, I want instant and detailed capability and more advanced analytics in terms of what's there. And so we have charts that will actually allow you to do that portion. And then for IT operations, I want to make sure that I map those to the operations in terms of checklists and, and guidelines for actual remediation instruction. And we have that component too. The key element is every one of these graphic charts is actually linked to each other. So clicking on the graph portion of it allows you to switch context and view it in the context of the others. So that if an executive says, I need improvement on XYZ, this particular group or this particular division, it can easily be translated to any of the other groups as direct instruction as to here's what they saw, here's what it means to me because I can now keep that business context of connection between what I'm seeing from my, my reporting infrastructure. Really important capability in terms of, of how that works and what's in place. So you can see um, in terms of what we're doing and to really wrap and come back up to the high level of after we walk through how uh, IP360 from a solution standpoint works with Lumetta, why we have this, this keen uh, network situational awareness in terms of what's there. Lumetta gives us the ability to see on a continuous um, real-time basis what's happening in my network, what new devices and new assets are coming on, where is the edge and boundary of my network, because it's continually flexing in our current environment as Wi-Fi and devices come in and out of it. But then really with the IP360 piece and the marriage between the two products, I now have keen comprehension. Um, and I can prioritize and trend my information. And what's more, I have a visualization mechanism where I can present executive level reports and literally do operational remediation on those on an ongoing basis and show direct connection between those security uh, remediation steps I take and executives uh, desire to have a, a level of confidence and security in terms of what's happening and that it's getting better uh, over time. And then the other piece is mitigation. I need to have accurate data. I need to know what's available. And I need to take the right steps so that I'm minimizing my, my threat surface, so that I know that as new threats come up, as they do, I have got a rapid way to go protect my environment and prevent intrusion. So that's really the, the, the essence of what we've got in terms of this um, solution offering, in terms of what's there. But none of this is really um, all that interesting without actually seeing a, a real world implementation and how things have actually been used. So um, for that, we, we have Josh Canary, who's actually uh, had this, this solution in place uh, and, and has some things to tell us about how it actually functions and works. Josh, offer to you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bryce. Um, exactly. It, the, the, the interesting comes when the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Um, so I wanted to jump into a little bit of background uh, just to give um, a specific case of where we're actually using the Lumetta and Tripwire um, products together and the, using the integrated solution. So um, part of the continuous diagnostic mitigation um, uh, program that's been released by DHS over the last year and the continuous monitoring as a service. It's designed to address 
um, all 124 federal agencies um, and to provide them the ability to secure their networks. Um, and and the, the goal of it is to secure it within three phases. But in terms of the background, obviously within the government there has been a lot of uh, um, attention on cyber from the, um, the malware, uh, exploits, exfiltrations, things like that. So in 2010, OMB assigns the cybersecurity responsibility to DHS. Since that time, uh, DHS has been building out its, its, its capabilities, uh, focusing in on, on programs like uh, Einstein and uh, CDM um, and things like that to try and increase not just the ability of, of the federal government to support itself, but also critical infrastructure and commercial, the, the commercial entities across the United States. Um, and the things that, that we've come to understand is that there's enormous amounts of money being spent on security um, that isn't necessarily spent in the best way. Uh, so for instance, um, you know, w while you can go out and buy a million dollar router, um, tell me about your password uh, reset policy. Tell me about uh, um, how your systems are being patched. Um, and so it, in go, jumping into the, uh, the, the, the story, so to speak, there has been guidelines upon guidelines upon guidelines that have come out from the government, um, one of which is including FISMA, um, which is designed to um, sort of provide a baseline of security. Now, the issue that comes when you're dealing with this many guidelines and this many directives and this many things um, you know, as a as as a nerd and as a person who enjoys reading, you know, there's just there's just no way to keep track and keep ahead of this many different guidelines, which is where products like Lumetta and Tripwire are actually giving you um, the guidelines and giving you the ability to, to categorize risks uh, makes it something that you can actually do. I mean, the idea of the entire CDM program, um, it's it focuses on three different phases. Um, and those three phases were in, in, currently in the first one, which is called en endpoint integrity. Um, and it's called endpoint integrity because we're dealing with hardware asset management, uh, vulnerability management, software asset management, and configuration management. So CSC as an integrator looked at hundreds of different products, um, and many do an incredible good job at doing any one of these different things. And some of them obviously do more than one. But what we really found uh, to be amazing about this is that just by using these two products, um, we're able to meet all four of the critical guidelines of the phase one of CDM. Um, as we move forward in, in, in CDM, what we're looking at right here is the capability wheel. So CDM, just as background, is, is a three-year program um, of um, enhancements. It's a five-year long blanket purchase agreement, but over the first three years, they're increasing the capability for the federal government to protect the internal networks, um, including also for state and locals can take advantage of it as well. But in the first year, we deal with the endpoint integrity, which I mentioned. Then we get into uh, what's called least privilege or identity management. And then the last phase in the third year would be the uh, incident management. Um, but right now, we're focusing on, on that phase one. Um, and, and what we found by combining the two products together, it's exactly what David was talking about in terms of that, that 20% gap. Uh, many products that we found that do the kind of vulnerability management and hardware asset management um, allow you to put in a uh, IP range. You know, I'll tell you where my network is. Now you go out and find all these devices that are on my network. What we found really interesting and, and unique about Lumetta was its ability to find rogue devices and leaks. So for instance, if you've got a very smart engineer or a very smart scientist within your government agency or even within your commercial entity, um, you, you might find them with, uh, with a DNS server or a DHCP, or DHCP server or, or you know, they have an office where it looks like they've got one IP address, but the amount of network traffic on that one IP address is impossible. Well, Lupin is smart enough to figure out that there's something going on there. And then, once again, going back to what Bryce was talking about, it's the actionable intelligence component of what comes from that. So once you've discovered that there's too much traffic, um, and if you're doing hardware asset management, then I can tell an engineer, hey, go out to this office and see what's going on in there. Because there's some things that no automated system will be able to tell you. But what it can tell you is that you've got something that requires further investigation. Um, because as, as both of them mentioned, ultimately the, the, the problem here and the things that we have to focus on is, is fixing it, right? It's not just a question of being able to outline what security is there or even to determine the extent of the vulnerabilities because there's that, 
that old saw that there's only two types of networks out there, those that have been hacked and those that don't know they've been hacked. So in that case, being able to find out your vulnerabilities and your exploits is important, but fixing them is actually the bottom line. That's what, that's what we come to work to do every day. Um, so being able to turn on the lights of your network, to be able to define what's out there is, is, is definitely the first step in terms of being able to protect them. If you don't know what's there, the, any number of patching, any number of, of system changes, or, or any number of firewalls or other devices you might buy is not going to protect what you don't know you have. Um, but then as important, uh, we're dealing with a risk framework analysis, right? So, so when we deal with that, um, it, you have to go beyond that. You have to be able to identify the risks and, and do the analysis to find out what's actually going to hurt you. Um, one of our, our a CEO uh, in the federal government usually uses the story about if somebody comes to him and says he has two bald tires, uh, well, that's potentially worrying. But if it turns out those two tires are hanging from a tree in his backyard, well, that's not that big of a deal anymore. So just by identifying the devices in your network and then not actually doing the categorization that, that, uh, that Tripwire provides when you're actually finding out where the risks are, um, you still don't you still don't know what's on your network. Um, another example would be, you know, with, with, with most uh, Windows servers, there's a bind service that's installed by default. Now, it's almost never turned on. We found a number of tools that would determine that there was, in fact, a bind service and raise a red flag. Um, but it's not a problem if it's disabled. So what we liked about the, the, the two products put together was that it allowed us to, to first turn on the lights, but then the categorization of those risks allowed us to not be blinded by what we see. Because as more and more BYOD systems are coming online, while the perimeter, which used to be the bastion of protection, is now getting more and more muddy, um, you know, where is your perimeter? Well, your perimeter is now on the cell phone that's in the pocket of your employee in his living room. So all of a sudden, I, I can't just put up four corners around my building and decide it's, it's, it's clean. I've now got to be a lot more engaged with the devices that are walking around um, outside of my control. Um, and, then, and then when we talk a little bit about that actionable intel, uh, so what are we going to do with it? Um, I think that brings us to sort of the point of the whole thing. And I know uh, there might be some folks in the military out there who have heard of OODA before. Um, I know I'm usually get, I get a little chuckle from folks when they see that bring up. But, but the reason for bringing that up when, you, when, you're, when you're orienting um, and you're observing and then you're taking action. You know, basically, you are finding out what's on your network. You're finding out what the risks are. You're finding out what the possible exploits are. You're deciding on the level of security control. You're deploying those security controls. And then even more important, you're monitoring them. And it's a never-ending process. Um, the thing that DHS talks a lot about, which is sort of providing those best practices, is the CSER framework which is a, content, a continuous asset evaluation, situ, situational awareness, and risk scoring. And it's a constant process because the point is, in terms of going back to that military metaphor, um, the OODA loop, you want to do it faster and faster because the faster you're able to bring your controls to bear and make changes and fix things that are broken, then you're able to get ahead of your adversary's OODA loop who's doing the same thing. Um, on his side, he's attempting to bring malware to bear, exploits to bear, exfiltrate your information, try and take advantage of, uh, of, of non-existent patches or even patches that you know, maybe the industry hasn't determined there's a weakness yet. So the faster you're able to turn a vulnerability into a, an Xbox that basically you say, no, I'm done here. This is no longer an exploit, no longer a vulnerability, the better off I'm going to be in the long term. Um, so very last thing, um, I know that was a full slide, but I wanted to mention a couple of different places you can go for more information. Um, CDM um, is something that is, is a, a, an IT70 BPA. It's available to all um, federal uh, agencies as well as state, local, and territorial and tribal agencies. Um, but it's, it's information is being uh, released by uh, FedSim and GSA as well as US CERT. So I just wanted to put up a couple of web pages up for you guys to take a look at. So CSC is one of the 17 primes. Um, there's 16 other um, system integrators that are providing solutions. Um, so in terms of um, there's a lot of buzz obviously around the network and around the, uh, the, the beltway on it. And I think what it's going to do 
is it's allowing the federal government to sort of stand up to what has been for a number of years um, having found themselves on the uh, on the on their heels a little bit from people coming after them to try and take information because in order to protect your network as everyone knows it's sort of peeling back an onion there are so many different layers so you can protect the perimeter but then also in terms of protecting the internals um, and with that said um, I want to turn it back over to um, Bryce I think for the wrap-up yeah Great. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that very much. Great, great example. Um, so uh, I want to walk in through the wrap in terms of what we've got. I mean, as you've seen and as Josh has just highlighted uh, with the CDM example, really the intent of this integration is to eliminate gaps in network intelligence. How do I uh, make sure uh, I've got everything that's on my network and that I, my vulnerability management program is um, complete and uh, fully functional in terms of what's there, and, and not just on the discovery component, but making sure that I have stateful, concise, accurate inspection of what's there. And then actually taking that to have maximum visibility and control. Uh, and, and to the UDA example, I want to do that faster and faster. I want to make sure that that visibility and control is actually um, accelerated, and I don't have to spend extra people time uh, in order to make that happen. That's the way we get enhanced security is we reduce the amount of response time and we re reduce that gap uh, in the ability to detect um, new vulnerabilities and exploits that could potentially um, provide risk to our environment. That's really the essence of, of what this capability is. So I, I want to say um, thank you for your time today. We've had a number of questions that have come in, and if you have others, please throw them for us. Um, and I want to go uh, through those. So, uh, David and Josh, are you are you ready for a couple of questions that are coming in? Absolutely. Sure. Great. All right. So, uh, the first one that's on the list, I think uh, this is this is going to come to you, David. Um, first question is, uh, how long would it take to provide a network situational awareness view for an organization of, say, a hundred thousand IPs? Do you have a uh, as ever? Right. The how long does it take? Um, yeah. So. You know, and that's a fair size organization, of course. Um, the scanning, the discovery piece that the Lumetta Solutions perform is, is you know, certainly pretty quick. I mean, we talk hours, we don't typically talk days. So to sweep through the space, I mean, you know, we like to say probably call it 24 hours to be able to fully scope, go through from a network discovery, a host discovery, right, determine the paths, identify the edge. Uh, it is a process, but the actual scanning itself is a matter of hours. Now, the analysis piece, well, that's more of the heavy lifting, so that can take some time as there's the, you know, the necessary interaction with the network operations team, security team, the architecture team, to make sure that as there's a discovery being performed, results are being uh, observed, they're run through the filter of what is this, what does it mean, is it yours, is it, you know, what category does it fit in, et cetera. So, um, you know, hours from a discovery perspective, and then, you know, the analysis that lays on top of that. So that's about great. that. Thank you. No, that's great. Uh, the next one that's coming in, I think, is uh, I think is aimed at me or at Tripwire IP360. Uh, the question is as follows. Can we make certain that critical vulnerabilities are critical so an organization can prioritize those vulnerabilities rather than just the systems? Uh, and the answer is yes. Um, there's multiple ways to do that in IP360. Um, the easiest way is to uh, filter your existing database specifically on vulnerabilities rather than system sets. Um, and we can actually provide uh, reporting uh, on that uh, when it's in happen, when it's in place. Um, so that's that one. Uh, next question up, I think uh, this one is probably, David, yours and mine, just guessing, but it says, what kinds of virtual and cloud infrastructures uh, can be analyzed? So you want to take the first round of that, David? Sure. Uh, yeah, currently we are deploying our solutions uh, on the VMware platform, via Amazon Web Services, on Hyper-V. Um, in addition, there's sort of two ways to think about these cloud environments as well. There's the view from the cloud, so thinking of it as a service deployed 
uh, in a public or a private cloud, as well as visibility in the cloud, seeing what's being turned up and turned down in the cloud infrastructure itself. So VMware, uh, AWS, and Hyper-V currently uh, we support. Cool. And I know that from a, from a Tripwire side, all of those things are true for us as well as we've got uh, deployments in Verizon Business Services, what was uh, Terramark, uh, as well as a number of other um, hosted providers. And we do have Citrix uh, Zen uh, capability as well. So, um, yeah. And Bryce, uh, if I can jump in on that. Yeah, please. One, yeah. one of the things, so I, I know we have an assessment of, I think it was 450,000 IPs in, se in, in less than 72 hours, a number of hours. Uh, but also, uh, one of the things that we found really compelling, which I, I, had, I thought you were going to mention, but I'm just going to make sure you do, is the agentless features. The, the fact that it's, a, as we were looking at real-world environments where you have <laughs> decades-old machines and things like that, and, 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 the, and, and, and the odds of, of breaking something by deploying a new piece of software into them or at least destabilizing existing infrastructure was a non-starter for us. So the idea that you can have agentless uh, and remote scanning um, so that you can maintain control from a, from a, from a cloud-based solution, that was, pretty, uh, that was pretty compelling for us. Excellent. Thank you, Josh. All right. Uh, I think I've got one more question, and primarily I think David and Josh, you can jump in. Um, this one is, what does, and I'm co actually combining two questions because they're the same, and it may require a, a demo, but um, what does a, de a Lumetta deployment look like? What is involved? Where do the devices reside? How do I do DMZs and segmented networks? That's a loaded 16 question uh, request. <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, that's, uh, there's a couple of pieces to that. So um, actually Josh made the point, so, and, and kind of working from the bottom up, if you will, agentless, right? So we're, we're looking from a visibility perspective. So where do you put um, Lumetta Solution? It's wherever you have visibility across the enterprise. And there's a couple of really quick examples. Um, we have a commercial client that's about 50,000 IPs. They have a heavily segmented environment and they've deployed sensors in 49 network segments. Um, they want to be able to do very localized point-to-point -point kind of visibility tests. Um, conversely, we have a, another uh, international commercial organization that's about 300,000 active assets and they have visibility from a single point in their network. They've got a, a global, you know, uh, um, you know, security tools or, or, or management land that allows them to see everything. So a single piece of equipment in that single place allows them to see everything. So it's a bit of a loaded question in that without understanding the, the organization itself, the network architecture, the extent of segmentation, the use cases for visibility to and from certain points, um, hard to answer, but fundamentally it's about visibility. So Put me where I can see, and I'm going to see it all. And I have a distributed architecture that allows me to put, um, you know, what we refer to as sensors in places to serve as eyes on the ground. And again, deploying these as virtual machines, um, obviously with hardware as an option too, uh, kind of eases the infrastructure or the deployment burden. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, and I, and I would throw two cents in just as a, an extra piece. Though. Our dynamic host tracking capability actually functions whether it's a virtual or if it's otherwise. So if something is discovered in one place and, and ends up moving uh, to a new place, we can actually give a high degree of certainty and say this is the same uh, device, whether it's rogue or whether it's uh, a known device so that we can uh, not have to take any remediation or uh, steps. So. Uh, great solution set, and, and thank you for that answer. Um, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, our question list. So, so with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time and uh, for listening to the session. And uh, Kate, back to you. You want to wrap? Thank you, Bryce. Uh, yes, I would like to thank our presenters today, David Lennon, Josh Canary, and Bryce Schroeder. And thank you to our audience today for spending about an hour of your time with us. We hope you found the presentation informative and relevant to you. As I had mentioned earlier, I will be sending out a link to the on-demand webcast and the slides. Also, you may reply to my email if you'd like to earn a CPE credit for attending the webcast today. So in, in closing, we hope you'll join us for future webcasts. Check out tripwire.com uh, for any upcoming events, and have a great day.